Hey guys, how's it going? It is Breaded Chicken here, bringing you some Modern Warfare 3 gameplay. This is Domination on Dome. If you're not familiar with the maps, that is all right. This is basically the small one that has one building, and well, actually, if you consider the dome a building, then there's two buildings, and basically everything else is open, and there's tanks and vehicles everywhere. Um, doesn't really make sense. The map doesn't really make sense, but you know, it doesn't really matter. It's a game, right? So basically, in this game, I got Bill Keys as well as Pyro. I'm not sure who else was in this game as I wasn't really paying attention. But I do get the first blood, and this game, this gameplay actually, is pretty darn cool. I do get a couple of cool kills, I would say. I actually throw a dummy care package that bounces off a wall and kills two people by smacking them in the head. Then someone runs up and uses it and explodes. So basically, a care package got me three kills, and I didn't even have to open it. Which is pretty cool. Right here, a little barrel kills me even though I don't know what happened there. Me and an enemy die at the same time from a barrel. Which was just, I guess, dumb luck or something. But anyways, guys, I want to talk about a few things. I want to talk about the guns, maps, uh, host migration, all that stuff. Game types, perks, kill streaks, campaign survival, and spec ops. All in one right here. Hopefully I will have the time and hopefully I have the interest of you guys. So you guys will pay attention. So first off, I want to say that this game is not Modern Warfare 2.5. Straight off the bat, if anyone tells you that, they obviously either haven't played the game or just don't like Call of Duty in general. But I do admit that this game looks a lot like Modern Warfare 2. It is using the same graphics engine. And I do admit to that. But this game isn't Modern Warfare 4. Blah, this game isn't Modern Warfare 2.5. I mean, they do have similar guns, do have similar graphics, but it isn't the same game. So basically, the guns, they feel great. Um, they feel like all Call of Duty guns. They feel like they're going to kill people if I shoot at someone and stuff like that. They feel like they're made from Infinity Ward just like they were. So it's nothing really game-changing about them. The only thing that's really cool is that you can actually level up your guns now so that they your guns can actually have a perk on them as well as you have to level them up to get attachments so the money system that black ops had is no longer in effect which is kind of depressing to me i thought they would actually take some of black ops's good ideas and use them but this game is actually i want to say it's if black ops never existed and they are going to make modern warfare 3 a year after modern warfare 2 so let's say that treyarch was working on this game two year or a year before Modern Warfare 2 came out and basically they were waiting for this game to release and that would be the third game so if Black Ops never existed and Infinity Ward was divided into two groups one of them was working on Modern Warfare 2 and before that game even released they started working on Modern Warfare 3 this is the game that would come of it so that's basically a little bit depressing I know because it isn't really a true sequel in my opinion I mean in my opinion I thought it'd be a lot better and there are a few things that actually really annoy me and are, you know, kind of buggy and stuff like that. But it isn't Modern Warfare 2. It is Modern Warfare 3. So, there you go. So, guns feel good. Talking about the maps ma maps now. The maps, this is one of the things that bugs me the most, is that the maps are insanely small. They are insanely small. Look at that map. That map is so small. I don't really know what to say about it. So Modern Warfare 2, like maps like Derail, which was huge, no map is even half the size of Derail, which is really depressing in my opinion. Like, I love the big maps. It would make for crazy big games where you'd go all tactical and, you know, have your teammates and talk to them if you're doing Search and Destroy or something like that. But in this, everything's two feet away. So I think that's why they made the run speed a lot slower, or made it feel weird to me at least. So, I'm not too sure if they actually changed the run speed because the maps are so small, but from my personal opinion and my personal experience with this game, the maps are insanely small. Haven't played all the maps though, but they are insanely small. They are so small. I don't know. <laughs> They're just really small. I mean, half the maps are probably a little bit bigger than Rust, honestly, in my opinion. They're a little bit bigger than Rust, and that's what they are. But that's basically the only thing that's had a big impact on me is that the maps are so small and you run a little bit slower than usual and uh, I don't know about that I don't know it really really isn't my cup of tea but uh, moving on to the kill streaks so right here you know I'm working up kill streaks I got a counter UAV I believe or is that a UAV I can't really tell on the screen I do have the um, 
the dummy airdrop, I, I forgot what it's called, I think it's airdrop something, something airdrop, whatever it is, I have the airdrop that kills you if you pick it up, I have the stealth bomber as my last one, that is about it. So pretty soon here, in a second or two, I'm going to be throwing my dummy airdrop and two people are going to get a nice surprise on their head. But until then, let's move on to the lag and the host migrations and all that stuff that people are complaining about. So basically, there isn't much lag in my opinion. The, there is some lag spikes here and there. It depends on who you're in a game with. If you're in a game with a ton of lag, then there will be a host migration here or there. Possibly even two to three in a game, which is kind of annoying. Um, here is where I believe I throw my... Yep, my airdrop trap, that is what it is. I throw it against the wall, and then I run away, and two people get a fist full of care package, basically. Right around here. Boom, look at that. Two people, double kill. I'm insanely good. This this game was insanely fun to play and destroy the other team. But moving on. So, yeah, the host migrations and stuff like that, there are a lot... But then again, it is the first couple of days. The last I checked, there were 7,500,000 people online. So that could be one of the things is that, you know, so many people, um, and a lot of people have bad connection just because. And yeah, so it's kind of hard to get into a good game that will last a long time. Usually, if you're in a party or something like that, you, one of the people in your party will get the host advantage. So that way, you know, it doesn't have to change and everyone will be good. There'll be no lag and stuff like that. Which is kind of nice, but uh, yeah, there's still host migrations and all that jazz, and just gonna have to deal with it until it goes away. But moving on to game types, this is what I was actually really excited about. Not at first, but when I started playing the game, what I was really excited about. So we have two new game types, I believe. We have Kill Confirmed, and the other one is Team Defender, or something like that. It's Flag Defender, something, something where you get the flag and whoever has the flag can earn points by getting kills or something of the sort. Haven't played that game type yet just because it doesn't sound fun to me. But Kill Confirmed, I was kind of a little wary at first because it was basically like Crisis 2 where you get kill streaks and get points by collecting a person's dog tag. And I didn't really know how it was going to work out. But now that I found that if you kill someone, you have to go collect their dog tag to earn a point for your team to progress. So basically, first one to 75 dog tag is collected, wins the game. And honestly, that is probably one of the most fast-paced tactical Modern Warfare 3 games that I have played yet. And that, it, it's really fun. It's, it's really fun in my opinion. Dog tags, madness, kills all over the place. I think it's probably my favorite game mode out of all of the game modes in the new game. And I'm, I'm loving it. I just love it so much. Just so good and so fun. So fast paced. Everyone's running around. Sometimes you can get like a triple spray, but you will die. So there'll just be like four dog tags laying there for someone to go run up and collect, which is just madness. So moving on to the perks and the kill streaks. So as I told you before, I'm running the kill streaks of UAV, dummy airdrop, and the um, stealth bomber. There is a ton of old kill streaks in this game there's a ton of new kill streaks in this game I'm not really too concerned about the kill streaks they don't really f you know fit my fancy I guess there are a lot of new ones that are very similar to old ones there's a lot of old ones that are in there um, they do have three tiers of kill streaks now basically they have the assault kill streak or assault tier which allows you to get kill streaks that add up to your KD basically like they're assault kill streaks they're kill streaks meant to harm the other teams uh, kill death and stuff like that and I'm not really into that you know whatever I could care less I'd rather have UAVs and stuff of the sort so that I can actually see the enemy and kill them with my gun instead of predator missiles and stuff like that um, next we have is the support kill streak tier and basically that's where the UAVs the counter UAVs the stuff like that the SAM turrets the the what's it called advanced UAVs which is basically like the blackbird like that's where all the support stuff is and I'm liking that that actually adds up after you die so it's not basically your running kill streak it's how many kills you get during the actual game which is really nice I mean, it allows a lot of new players to get used to the game and stuff but that constantly means that there's always a UAV for your team as well as the enemy going around so that sort of brings me to the perks so perks 
a lot of people are using the assassin perk, which allows you to not be seen by, you know, UAVs and stuff of the sort. And that's kind of the problem, is that since there's so many UAVs going around because of the support kill tier, as well as, you know, the assault has um, UAVs and stuff like that. Since there's always UAVs, people feel the need to actually run these perks that are kind of game changing they're kind of like ghost which is really annoying but i guess that's where it's going to go until someone decides that they're going to patch kill streaks and stuff like that but as you can see this game is about wrapped up there's pyro getting a double almost a double i've got 42 kills 10 assists and 19 deaths i am top of the team and i'm out you guys so this has been breaded chicken I haven't talked about the campaign I haven't talked about survival I haven't talked about spec ops i'll probably put another video out soon after i get those done and then uh, we'll have ourselves a party, won't we? So I'm Brad Chicken. See you guys later. Peace.